All right, guys, what we're doing today is we're learning to time your two-stroke SeaDoo engine. These are applies to all the rotary valve engines. It does not apply to the 951 because that is a reed valve engine. What you want to do first is you want to find out what type of engine you have. You can look on the front plate. You can see that is a 717. Then go online or in the manual, and they're going to give you a timing number. This one happens to be 147. So you know your timing number for a 717 engine is 147. Then you bring this front cylinder, it's the magneto cylinder, front side of the engine cylinder, to top dead center. You can use a screwdriver or you can use a pencil or whatever you need. And you just turn the PTO wheel until that screwdriver comes all the way up and barely starts to move down and you know that you're at top dead center on the front cylinder. Then what you want to do is you want to get a timing wheel right here. You can get it online, SBT, whatever. And you want to mark whatever engine you have, what timing number they give you. This one's again 147. Then you want to just stick it on there. Make sure it's not upside down and your numbers are reading wrong. Then what you want to do, and this applies to all uh, rotary valve SeaDoo engines, they're always going to use the number 360. So now this number is going to be different for the engines, but this number is going to be the same, 360. And you can see there's a line right here. So you want to put that 360 mark right at the bottom of your magneto side of your engine, the front engine exhaust port you want to line the number 360 up on just like that and you can see that's lined right up it gives you that line which makes it a little easier some of them have it some of them don't then I marked 147 up here and you can kind of see somebody has already scribed it into this aluminum do not do that it damages the surface. Mark it on your wheel and then mark it on this outside edge right here where the cover goes. Don't mark it in here. Then you turn that to 147. Make a mark, which this one's already marked, but mark it up here. Then you want to remove your timing wheel and get your rotary valve. This is it right here. It can go on both ways, this way or this way. And what you want to do is you want to get as close to your mark as you can. This setting can vary five degrees. So if you're not right on your mark, it's not going to matter as long as it's not out five degrees. If it's out more than five, it's going to raise hell. Do not worry about this edge anymore. You were just using that to get this mark. It's not important with your rotary valve. What is important is getting as close to that 147 mark as you can get. So you try it one way first and see how close it is. And you can see that one is really close to the mark. If it's far away or if it's over the mark, flip this plate over until you get close to it. And whichever direction is the closest to your mark is the one you want to go with. And remember, it's not always going to line up right on the mark. It can vary five degrees. Then you slide that on there just like that. Then you have a backing plate that goes on, which looks like this. You want to make sure that your fingernail cannot hang any deep grooves in this. If you hang deep grooves in it, you need to send it off to SBT, buy another one that does not have deep grooves. You can have surface scratches, things like that. I mean, that's normal. But a deep groove that hangs a fingernail, what it will do is you will have no power in the water. It won't take off and people start tearing the carburetors and stuff apart and can't figure it out and that's what it is. Then you have an O-ring right here on the edge. You want to put a little bit of sealant around that O-ring if you have an old O-ring. And I do it even with a new one. But I mean very little sealant because if you squeeze it out onto this surface, onto that valve, the engine will not turn over. It will stop the engine from turning over. It's such a tight fit. So just put a very little bit of, you can use clear silicone, uh, anything, just a very little bit of sealant. And I use a little paintbrush to paint it on and it works great. That way you don't leak any air. And also you want to take a little bit of engine oil on your finger or a paper towel and just rub this surface before you put this rotary valve on. Just rub this surface right here just so it, when it starts you know it's not dry. 
and then put your plate on which obviously goes on here and then torque it down to specs and then your carburetor manifold goes here and that's all there is to it